In this video, we are going to be talking about Amazon Cognito. Cognito is a very powerful AWS service that offers authentication and authorization features. The problem with learning Cognito is that not only do you need to learn a brand new service, but you also need to learn about authentication and authorization fundamentals and how they relate to the service as well. So if that sounds familiar and you're just confused by Cognito overall and you want to know how it works and what it offers, then this is the video for you. Um, so let's just jump right into it and talk a little bit about what Cognito is and why it's a popular AWS service. So what is Amazon Cognito? So Cognito is an AWS service that offers authentication, sometimes referred to as AuthN for short, and authorization, sometimes referred to as AuthZ for short. Now, just as a really quick reminder, authentication refers to the process of identifying who a person is. That's usually done through some kind of login form, or if you have like an iPhone, for example, that uses facial identification to unlock your phone, technically that's a form of authentication because the application is figuring out who you are as an individual. Authorization is the other half of that. Authorization refers to what an individual has access to. So certain access rights could be to an AWS service, could be to a certain web page that's only accessible for administrators, so on and so forth. So authentication or authn is who a user is and authorization or authz is what a user has access to. This will become more relevant later on. So Amazon Cognito as a whole allows you to add features like user registration, user sign-in, and access control to your applications. So this means that you know, you're building a web application, you want to offer some kind of login functionality where you can collect uh, like a bunch of users and their information and also give the ability for that user to sign in and you only want signed in users to be able to access your APIs. These are the kinds of things that you can do with Amazon Cognito. Now, Cognito is also a scalable and highly available AWS service that supports up to 40 million users out of the box. It's also very cost effective as well. Um, and it's a totally managed service by AWS. All the data about your users is stored within the Amazon Cognito service. So there's no compute, there's no storage, there's no nothing that you uh, need to worry about. It's all hidden for you and managed by Cognito behind the scenes. Now, in terms of the protocols that are supported by Cognito, in terms of authentication and authorization, uh, it supports standards based on identity providers. So OAuth 2.0 is probably the most popular one that uh, many of us are familiar with. OIDC or OpenID Connect, which is an extension of OAuth 2.0. And then there's legacy SAML, of course. And Cognito as a service overall is useful in many, many different contexts. Some I already briefly touched on, uh, but primarily the, the main feature of the service is that it allows you to keep an active directory of users that you can integrate into your application. So adding that sign on, adding that registration, handling all of that kind of forgot your password, resets, multi-factor authentication, all of that jazz that uh, you would normally have to worry about if you weren't using Cognito and had to implement yourself, all of that is handled for you. And in fact, that relates to kind of why you use Amazon Cognito. If you had to build your own authentication authorization solution yourself, there'd be a ton of work you'd have to do. You'd have to store passwords, worry about encryption, worry about security, all of that stuff. Uh, by using Cognito, you don't have to worry about any of that and you get to focus on your business problem and minimize the amount of effort towards worrying about like user directories and user signups. Um, so the other useful uh, utility of Cognito uh, is securing your APIs. So we're going to see a little bit about this later. Uh, say, for example, you only want your APIs to be call callable by authenticated users or people that have logged into your application. Cognito offers you the ability to do that so you can protect your APIs from bad actors. And another useful feature of Cognito is that there's a feature set that allows you to provide temporary access to AWS resources. So if you want to give kind of limited uh, credential access to an AWS service, such as you know maybe you want a user to upload a file to S3 as opposed to going through your system, um, you can have a user sign in and then temporarily grant that user some AWS credentials and that user can go ahead and access your S3 bucket uh, on your behalf. So that is Amazon Cognito in a nutshell. Now I want to move on and talk about some of the core concepts that are involved in Amazon Cognito. So the things that you're going to be interacting with regularly. Um, so there's two main ones. The first one is called user pools. 
and the other is called identity pools, which is sometimes referred to as federated identities now. AWS is kind of going through an identity crisis, <laughs> no pun intended, but they are renaming some of this stuff, so uh, keep that in mind if you're looking at the documentation. So let's start with user pools and talk about that first. Now for user pools, the fundamental purpose that user pools provide is the ability to manage a directory of users. So think of them as a pool of users and you can have an application or many applications that interact with that user pool. And the flow looks a little bit something like this. So in the center here, we have Amazon Cognito, the service itself. You have an application that you want to provide the user access uh, to your user pool. So you want to offer some kind of login functionality on your application so that only a certain subset of users can access. Maybe you have an API server over here. So the application interacts with the user pool, so submits credentials in a normal kind of login form. And there's an exchange of tokens that goes on here. This is all about OAuth 2.0. This is nothing particular about Amazon Cognito. Uh, OAuth 2.0 is just one of the protocols that it supports. And it's the most popular one. So in addition to kind of doing this exchange with OAuth 2.0, user pools allow you to use either Amazon Cognito itself as an identity provider or using any of these social sign-ons as an identity provider. So Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, so on and so forth. Now, what that means is that you as an application developer has, have two different options. You can have your user sign up and register their credentials directly within Amazon Cognito as a service. So you can ask your user to you know, create a username, create a password, create a secret answer, secret question and answer, et cetera, et cetera. In that case, Cognito itself is the identity provider. Now, in addition, if you're using OAuth, then you can also integrate other social sign-on providers into your user pool. So every one of us at some point of our lives has probably seen sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with Amazon, sign in with Apple. You've probably either used or seen that in the past. So what you can do with Cognito is you can integrate these other identity providers into your user pool. So what that offers you is the ability to add um, that sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook. And when users use that identity that is managed by these external systems, you'll also get a record of that user in your system. So in other words, users can either be added to your user pool by directly creating a user within Cognito or by you integrating your user pool with any of these social sign-on providers, you can let the user log in with these providers, which allows you to get a record of them and let them be authenticated into your system. So that's kind of how this uh, social sign-on system works and a little bit about like token exchange and Cognito overall. So again, user pools are all about user management and um, like kind of user registration and sign up and login and all that kind of stuff. Now, what identity pools are useful for is for providing short-term access to AWS services. So this is what the flow kind of looks like here. Um, so you have a web app or application that you need uh, the user to get authenticated with a login provider. And you can have Facebook, Google, um, Amazon, Apple, any of these providers that are integrated with your Cognito user pool. Or as we mentioned, you can have the user directly integrated with Cognito. Um, so that's an option as well. So after the user logs in, they get access to a credential set or IAM role that has access to certain AWS services. And these credentials are returned to the user so that they can interact with AWS directly in subsequent calls. You can also assign kind of guest roles. So if someone um, isn't signing in, maybe they're a guest user or a, a visitor that doesn't have a registered account, you can associate some uh, very restricted access credentials as well. So it does support this kind of guest concept. Now what ties these two things together is that you can have users that are registered in your user pool. And then as part of your user pool setup process, you can tag users with certain maybe um, profiles or themes. Maybe someone's a, an administrator and another person's a student. You can tag attributes on the users as user pools. And then when the user is authenticated in the identity pool, you can read off of those attributes that were tagged to the user and decide which role to use. So for example, if a user is signing into the user pool and they are tagged with an attribute that says administrator, maybe they should get access to both of these two services. If they're signed in as a student or, or something else with least restrictive policy or a lesser policy, then maybe they only have limited access to these services or just one access to these services. So you can assign an IAM role 
based on these attributes that exist on the user in the user pool. So that's what ties these two things together. So we kind of dug into this at a high level and talked about how these things are connected. Now I just kind of want to dig into each of these concepts a little bit more. So let's start with user pools and understand a little bit about what the experience looks like of like what does creating a user pool look like. Um, so creating a user pool. So this is the screen that you uh, have access to in the AWS console. Keep in mind that they are revamping the UI for this. So this may look different, but you can see in the, the sections here, we have the pool name, we have required attributes. You can set email. Uh, if you want aliases, case sensitivity, password length, you have control over password policies. If you want extra special characters, um, if you want users to be able to sign themselves up or someone has to manually create the user, you can control that as well. There's a plethora of different options that you have access to here that you can play around with. So with your user pool directory, you can manage all of these settings and change them at any time as well. So that's what creating a user pool looks like. Uh, let's move on now to talk about the user pool hosted UI. This is a key feature that is available with Amazon Cognito. So what the user pool hosted UI is, is that when you create a user pool and you attach it to an application, you get access to a URL that's hosted by AWS. And with this URL, when you visit it, this is what it looks like by default. This is kind of the, the login screen or the login web page that users can use to interact with your application. It's configured and bound to your application using a very unique URL that's associated with it. So if a user were to, you know, kind of click on sign up here and register for a, a new account, they would be entered into our user pool. And the neat thing about the hosted UI is that it makes it very, very easy to integrate with your application. All you would need to do is maybe on your web app, you would say, click here to sign in. That would redirect the user to your user pool hosted UI. The user would sign in or register. And also when you create your hosted UI, one of the parameters that you need to specify is a redirect URL. So after the user logs in, the user will be redirected back to your web application and embedded in the query string URL will be the tokens that the user will use for authentication purposes in subsequent calls. So that's how this whole thing works. You get access to this neat uh, UI, whereas <clears throat> you get access to this neat UI that handles all of this stuff for you. So as we were talking about before, we had this notion of social sign-ons with Google and Facebook and Apple and all that. Uh, so how does that look? Well, once you integrate with these other identity providers and enable them on your hosted UI, you have access to these social sign-on providers here. So like you can see, uh, this section over here is a little bit different. We've added Google as an identity provider. So what does it look like in the user pool? Say we created an account using this process and we uh, signed in using this process here. Well, here's what Cognito will look like in terms of the user directory within your account. Uh, so your user pool will have two entries in it. So the first one you can see here, it's associated with the one that we have on the left-hand side. So the username was created and uh, it's currently enabled. Uh, it's in a state where we need to confirm our email or reset our password. And then similarly, you can see that um, in the right-hand side, we used Google to create that user entry. And this is all automatically generated, like Google underscore and this number, this is completely automatic. But you can tell the identity was created through an external provider and not necessarily directly within our identity or user pool rather. So this means that, um, you know, this first entry is the user is created directly in your pool. And the second entry is that the user is created using a third party identity provider. So that's how that works. Uh, keep in mind, you don't have to necessarily use the hosted UI. There's other options to integrate it directly into your application as well, but this is just an option to get you started quickly. All right, so at this point, I wanna talk about application integration with user pools. How do we actually use these user pools to guard access to our AWS resources? So I have two different diagrams here that illustrate how you can set this up. So the one that we have on the left here should look pretty familiar. So we have our application. Um, that application, either through the hosted UI or through other means, um, provides authentication for that user. The user authenticates with Amazon Cognito. They're redirected back to your web application with tokens. Now the application needs to provide those tokens to your backend, your REST API. And those tokens need to be kind of examined or verified with Cognito itself to validate that they're correct um, and not forged or kind of um, just fake tokens that a person put in your, your access request. So that's one option to set this up. Requires a little bit more manual work, but it is very easy to do and it's a pattern that a lot of people follow. 
Another one that's a little bit easier if you're already kind of immersed in the AWS ecosystem and you're using API Gateway um, is this model that we have over here. So you have the same process, the user authenticates, they get their tokens, yada, yada, yada. But now instead of calling your backend services directly, if you have an API Gateway that you can put in front of it, um, API Gateway natively integrates with user pools. So you can connect these as a configuration setting and automatically when a user tries to call your API Gateway endpoint, the token will be validated with your user pool to verify that it's legit before the request actually gets to your Lambda function or your EC2 machine or your ECS, whatever you have behind your API Gateway, you're basically guaranteed that the user is authenticated uh, and has access to the resource if you're controlling it that way too. Um, so that's another option that makes it a lot easier. I have a video on this that I'll put in the description section uh, where you can watch how this is done, but very, very straightforward. And I actually have one on this step as well. Um, but yeah, you can, I'll put them both in the comment section so you can check them out. So previously we talked about using hosted UIs to integrate with Amazon Cognito. Now there are two other options that you can consider as well if you want a more native experience. The first one is using AWS Amplify. Amplify is a service by uh, AWS that makes it a lot easier to create and deploy applications and it allows you to add authentication really, really easy as well. It's really popular with web developers and mobile developers looking to set up an app quickly. I have a video on this too, which I'll leave below. But basically when you're using Amplify, you can add auth. It's literally like a command line tool that you write one line and it'll add like all the infrastructure that you need behind the scenes, the user pool, lambdas, everything that comes with it. And uh, you can use that SDK to interact with Cognito on the back end. So that SDK allows you to embed a login like form directly into your home application on its own URL as opposed to using that hosted UI. So that makes it a lot easier because it handles it all for you and provides the React components too. Now the other option that some people do as well, this is kind of a more advanced option that you should probably know a little bit about authentication before you pursue. But if you want to um, use the AWS SDK as well, so you can call all of these Cognito endpoints, you know, register user, initiate auth for login, uh, forgot password, reset password. You can call all of these APIs from your front end, but that means that you also need to, you know, you need to build the form, the login section, the uh, username section, the password section, all the buttons that are associated with it, wire it all together. You can certainly do this. It's just more effort and requires more time. Uh, but those are the two main options when it comes to application integration with your user pools. Now, another important feature of user pools, which makes them extremely, extremely powerful. This is a more advanced feature, but it's something that you should know about. So it's this notion of triggers and triggers allow you to run custom code in response to Cognito specific events. So for example, when a user signs in to your application, that triggers an event within Cognito. So what triggers allow you to do is hook up a Lambda function. A Lambda is just a serverless uh, function that you can write and, and associate code with that runs in response to an event. So you can attach a Lambda function to the Cognito sign up event. And then you can run something in your Lambda code. Maybe you want to call a database. You can you know call whatever you want um, based on the user that just signed up and maybe tag that user with an attribute. So those are some of the things that you can do with triggers and there's all types of different events that you can hook into. So this is just a subset of them. So like you can see here, there's authentication events. So you can do pre-authentication, which is custom validation to accept or deny the sign-in request. So before the sign-in is, is let through, if the user provides the password, maybe you want to check something else, check some other state. Maybe if the user is active in your other registry of accounts. You can do post-authentication, so right after they've authenticated, before the tokens are generated. There's sign-up ones, you, like you can see here, post-confirmation, migrate user. There's a dozen or so of these that you can integrate with. And this is where you can do some really interesting stuff with Cognito because you can tag your users with attributes and tag them with maybe categories or profiles that they're associated with. And then now those attributes are associated with the user that you can use in your web application if you want to implement some kind of authorization, or you can use that in identity pools, um, like we discussed before, to grant short-term AWS access credentials. So very, very powerful stuff. Triggers are like a more advanced function for sure, but they let you do all sorts of custom stuff with uh, your user pool. 
So just as a quick little recap of user pools so far. Um, so Cognito user pools at their heart are all about user directories, about the storage of users and managing those users uh, in your user pool. Additionally, users can sign up or sign in either directly in Cognito or via a social sign-on provider. Cognito leverages common OAuth 2.0 flows such as implicit and authorization grant flow. We didn't talk about this a lot in this video, but these are the most common ones if you're using OAuth. Uh, triggers allow you to inject hooks into certain auth stages, including sign up, login, all that kind of stuff. And you can integrate with Cognito via Amplify, the AWS SDK, or by using that hosted UI. So that was all about user pools. Let's move on now to talk about identity pools. All right, so identity pools. Uh, Cognito identity pools, like we discussed earlier, allow for you to provide short-term AWS access for users. And you can integrate your identity provider, whether or not that's uh, directly within your Cognito user pool or a social sign-on provider, you can integrate them into your identity pool. Now, you can also provide guest access for restrictive authorization if you want to provide that functionality. It's totally optional, though. And finally, you can dynamically select certain IAM roles via token attributes. That that's what we talked about previously using kind of an admin group tag or um, a student group tag or something like that, or based on crafting custom IAM policies that use the principle to determine what permission level a user has on a resource. That's a more advanced form of uh, managing the roles, but it is an option for you as well. So let's understand a little bit about what the creation process of an identity pool looks like. And this is kind of the, the wizard that you need to run through in the AWS console if you were to do so. So you can see here, we're naming our identity pool. We're enabling access to unauthenticated identities. This is just basically if we want to support guest users, uh, authentication flow, basic or classic. You don't want to use classic anymore. Uh, and then it's asking us which authentication provider do we want to supply or support for this identity pool. So you can set it to use your Cognito user pool. And these are the attributes of the user pool. If you want to integrate directly with Amazon, Apple, Facebook, or Google, um, these are also options for you as well. So this is what the creation process looks like. Pretty straightforward, nothing fun going on. Um, now let's talk about that role assignment functionality because this is really where the power is for um, creating and interacting with identity pools. It's dynamically assigning uh, roles to users depending on certain circumstances. So this is the most primitive form here. We're doing it basically uh, if you want to do it by authenticated user. So all authenticated users will get one role and all guest users will get another role. So these are kind of two very simple ways of doing it. But like you can see here in the config, um, you're specifying a, a role for your authenticated identities who would like access to Cognito, and it's this role. And as a quick reminder with IAM, uh, the role is what specifies what a person has permissions to in AWS. And then conversely, this part is for guest user. As you can see, your authenticated, uh, unauthenticated identities would like to access Cognito. So that allows you to, to um, assign a more restrictive role like you can see over here. Now, uh, let's talk about advanced role assignment. So we already talked a little bit about that token-based assignment, um, and that's kind of what this is on the screen in front of you here. So this is another part of the configuration step. Now, what you, we're looking at here is that the claim that we're gonna be looking for to base our role on is the claim called group. Now, claims are just kind of assertions about the, the user. So they consist of, uh, it's a dictionary with keys and values. So in this case, uh, we're saying the group is the claim that we want to read off of. So that's the attribute name. And you can say contain student. So if the user has a claim that's tagged with student, then we assign them a specific role. If they have a group that's tagged with instructor, then we assign them another role that maybe is a little bit more permissive. So this is where like the, the tie-in comes with um, identity pools and user pools. You can tag your users using triggers and maybe add a group to them during the registration process using a maybe post sign up trigger. Um, like we talked about before, you can tag them with an attribute such as student. And now when the user tries to access AWS, they're going to have a role that has the correct permission level. So this is kind of what um, this token based uh, role assignment is. And the IAM policy based one, this just involves you crafting an IAM policy statement where you will use substitution in the IAM policy to derive um, access. So for example, this is useful if you want like users to have access to 
like um, just a, a path of an S3 bucket based on their username. So um, they you only want to give them access to certain uh, S3 files, for example. That's useful there. But I'm sure there's many other reasons to use policy-based, but my experience, token-based is um, the one that's easiest to set up. Uh, so again, just as another recap for identity pools. Um, so identity pools provide short-term AWS access for users. You can integrate your identity provider with your identity pool. There's guest access and um, you can select roles with token attributes or IAM policies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can check out the other ones on the right and left about Amazon Cognito. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.